Welcome back, everyone. Time for better tech tips with new technolo technology advances on the rise. It's Friday. Yes. Devices can become prone to data leaks that could harm your personal information. Stan Prager is here today to talk to us about the Verizon leaks and what we can do to protect our devices. So, Stan, this was a pretty big deal. It is a pretty big deal, and it wasn't a specific hack. It was an, an inadvertent leak of data. Mm -hmm. So what that means essentially is, is uh, uh, Verizon uses a third-party service called Nice Systems, which hosts a lot of its customer call data, okay? And they then host this data on an, an Amazon server. So we're talking like three different entities now. Yeah. You've got Verizon, Nice, too and many Amazon. Hands in the pot. That's a good way of putting it. Mm -hmm. So, or too many hands on the dial or something. Yeah. But anyway, um, so it, because of a human error, there was a switch turned on, so this data was public for a few days. Um, so what that means is if, and there's, as far as we know, nobody actually accessed that data, as far as we know, mm -hmm. but they may have. They certainly could have, potentially. It could have been a disaster. So six million Verizon customers' data was exposed. What made this particularly worrisome was that it wasn't just like name, address, phone number, all the usual stuff. Also, their PIN numbers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you have a cell phone account or, you know, many accounts that you have, there's a PIN, right. which designates that you're Chris, you know, you're Brittany, when you talk to them before you can do anything on the phone okay. or whatever. That's okay? your security at that That's point. your ultimate security, right? So, in this case, those PIN numbers were unmasked and exposed on here. So what that means is if I was a criminal and I got that information, if I didn't just sell it within 30 seconds on the dark web, mm -hmm. which would be the smart thing to do, but right. if I didn't, if I wanted to take it a step further, I could literally have your phone moved to my phone by using that. Because there's two-step authentication, right? Yeah. So you have to prove who you are. I can prove who you are. So I can actually trick the carrier into doing a SIM card swap, it's called. Mm -hmm. So I could have yours moved to me. Nice. Basically. The only way to summarize that really is holy identity theft, Batman. Well, to the person's phone whose identity has been stolen, would your phone then just stop working? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just so like when you, you pick got a up new your phone, phone one day and it okay. just like when you got a new cell phone, you know when you switch to the new one, you you call up and you do an ESN number yep. switch, and then your old phone, your photos and everything are still on there, but you can't do anything with it, right? You right. Can't, it, the function's gone. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's no longer live. So that's the case. So now I have it on my phone, mm -hmm. and now I'm using it basically to hijack everything that I can. Plus, I can commit other kinds of crimes that can only be traced back to you. Yeah, that's because, what I was thinking. That's exactly. diabolical thinking, Stan. It is diabolical thinking. Now, will the folks whose identity could have been stolen Will they ever find out? Will Verizon release the information to these six million users and say, listen, your, your ID could be on the dark web, so mm. take precaution, or they'll never know? I can't answer that question myself. I don't know. I like to think that most companies won't do that, that they'll just say, don't worry about it. We've taken care of it. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, it's all taken care of. But I would of. say if you are a Verizon customer, you should change your PIN. Okay. right away. I would say, you know, I never really thought about changing pins in the past. I always talk to people about changing their password, mm -hmm. but maybe that would be a good idea going forward, regardless of who you have, whether you have Sprint, AT&T, or whatever, even if you weren't a victim. What's really, I think, sobering about this whole, whole event is the fact of how many third-party vendors are handling your data. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You know, both medical data, any kind of data, mm -hmm. is being hosted somewhere else, and things can go wrong. That's the weak link in the, the chain. Yeah. Yes. All right, thanks, Dan. Coming up next.